Hi, in this video we're going to show you how to use the Dropbox Passwords feature. So it's kind of like their own version of a password manager that you could use to store your website passwords. And then you could also sync them with other devices like smartphones or tablets. And that way you'll have all your passwords synced on all of your devices. So for the free account, you could save up to 50 passwords and sync up to three devices. So this is you know, similar to using the Google Chrome password manager where it'll save your passwords. And as long as you're logged into your other devices with your Google account, it'll do the same thing. But this is just uh, through Dropbox, and it has some you know, additional features that the default Chrome Passwords Manager doesn't have. So in order to use this, you're going to need to add the extension to Chrome. Uh, it also works for Edge, and I believe probably Firefox too. I'm not sure about other browsers, but you could try it out and see. I'll put a link in the description here. So once you get to the uh, Chrome Web Store for this extension, click on Add to Chrome. Make sure you're logged in as your Google user, click on Add Extension. Now it's going to look for your Dropbox account. If you're not logged in, you'll have to log in. I was already logged in with this test Dropbox account, so I don't have to, well, it didn't prompt me to log in. And then you'll see it under your extensions here. And then you could do things like, you know, pin it, remove it, manage it, and that kind of thing. All right, so when you get here, you have your suggested sites and you don't have any saved passwords. So you could, if you use any of these, you could sign in right here and have it saved. Or you could click here, add new one manually, or import from like a CSV file or another website if you have any saved passwords in your, I should say not website, but another browser if you have saved passwords in your browser. And then up here, you have your various options. So you see you have 50 of 50 free accounts. You click on that, it takes you back here, security dashboard. This will show you any breaches and password alerts once you start adding sites there. So I don't have any websites saved, so therefore there's nothing here to see. And then your preferences. So see, so connecting one of three devices, and then you could upgrade for Unlimited if you want to do that. You could import from here too. You could export to a CSV once you get it stuff saved. If you want to you know, keep your passwords in a CSV file, you could do that. And then if you decide you don't want to use this anymore and you want Dropbox to delete all your passwords from your account, you could come here and reset it. Okay, and then you got your Setup tab here. So by default, it's set to automatically save your usernames and passwords when you sign into websites. And then here's where you could connect to another device. So you could just click on Connect. It'll send you an email to your account. And then you could log on with that email on your other device and set it up and have your password synced. And then this tells you what you're syncing with right now. So right now it's only Chrome on Windows. That's the only one I have this syncing with. Privacy. If you want to add a passphrase to um, automatically get into your password manager, so therefore you need a password to get to your passwords, you could do that. And then recovery words. If you ever lose your password and you need to get into your account, you could look at these words here. You could you know, copy and paste these words and save them. Um, it'll actually let you save a PDF or you could put them in a Word or Notepad document and then print it out and then you'll have those in case you need to get back into your account. And then sharing. So you could share your website passwords with other people, but I don't have any shared, so we'll kind of do that too as well. Okay, so let's go back to our account. Okay, so first we're going to log into a website and see if it saves it for us. So we'll go to Target here. Sign in. So I need the password for this account, which I'll type in. Okay, so you can see that it popped up saying it's automatically saved this account, or, or yeah, login, login saved. So that'll show up when you log into an account. And then you can undo it or open it in the app, view the password, edit the information if you want to do that. Okay, so now let's go back to the settings here and right here. And let's change it to ask to save this time. So that way, when we uh, add a new account, it'll ask us to save it. Go back to our accounts here. So we got the target. So now let's log into Walmart here and see what happens. OK, so now it looks like the same type of screen, but this time it's saying, do you want to save or not now? or never save for this website. So it's a little bit different. 
So it's not automatically saved. It was just prompting to save because I changed that setting in the preferences. So we'll say save. Go back to our accounts here. Now you can see we have the two accounts here. And then if you want to add something manually, so let's say this Reddit account here. And then enter the uh, email address and password that you use for that account. Click on save. So it actually put in the login URL there. I could have just pasted in the one that I got from the uh, website either way here. So let's click on save. There's the, showing you the recovery words again for some reason. Okay, so now we could go here. Let me close this first. Click on autofill. And then it automatically filled it in. You can see it puts the little Dropbox passwords, little symbol there telling you that it was filled in with your Dropbox passwords account. Okay, so we got that one. So I'll go back here again. So we got these three. And like I said, you could go here to either one of these and change your options here. Okay, so now let's try sharing one. You can get to it from here, from the ellipsis, or you could click on it here, click on share. Put in the email address of the person you want to send it to, or share it with. Click on share. Okay, so now you can see, if we go to each one here, this one has shared with, where this one doesn't. And if you change your mind, you could click on it, manage the shares, resend the invitation, remove access, unshare, or share more items with that person. So now we'll go to this person here. Refresh. Okay. Okay, so Todd wants to share with you a Dropbox password. Let's view the share. Now this person, she already has the Dropbox passwords set up and therefore it puts it into her Dropbox account. So if she doesn't have it, then She's not going to be able to receive the share here. And now she could go right to the website and log in with this user. And you can see it's got the same information here. She and Todd are sharing it. Original person who's sharing it. The password if she wants to view it. Shared by Todd. Same kind of breaches tab. And so, yes, that's kind of cool, too. So if you want to just share a login URL and password with somebody, you could do that pretty easily. And that way they could get into the website. So let's go back here again. Okay, so yeah, so like I said, just install the plugin or extension, I should say. Configure the websites you want to use. You either add them manually, import them from your website or password manager. And then you'll have them all listed there. And you could, you know, edit each one, remove it, and so on. And then if you want to go to your preferences, if you want to upgrade your account or import from here as well, if you want to export, so now we have three accounts, so I could export those to CMV, CSV, I should say. Reset the account so there's no more saved passwords. How you want to auto save and auto fill, ask always or never, and then fill in usernames and passwords and log in websites, connect to other devices, and then we'll show up here. Got your privacy settings for your passphrase and recovery words. And now under the sharing tab, you'll see we have one shared item. And you can unshare from there. All right, so hopefully that wasn't too confusing. It's, you know, once you first install it, you kind of got to go through all these little settings here and figure out how it works and play with it. But after you, you know, use it for a little while, it's not too complicated. All right, thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe.